The opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the hosts and their guests and may or may not be shared with the staff and management of this network. Ghostly Talk! Broadcasting from the world-famous haunted winery here in Warren, Michigan, This is Ghostly Talk on June 28, 2009. Ghostly Talk is independently produced every Sunday night from 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time to converse about all things paranormal. For more info, go to www.ghostlytalk.com. Tonight, Dwayne Claude joins us to talk demonology. Uh, Then later on, we talk to Weather Warfare with Jerry Smith, which is going to be really cool. Mm -hmm. And then finally tonight, David Selaff returns. Yeah, we're not going to lose anything, thank goodness. I'll be able to just kind of punch that thing and make People it People will more. only know you've done it by us talking about it now. Well, what we'll do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, why are we talking about it? No, I don't know. Forget what you heard. We'll do the Men in Black No thing. mistakes were made. No, what, I'll, what we'll do, this is what we'll do. I'll let you a little secret into Radio Land, and when you screw things up like that, what we'll do for the archive is, after the show tonight, Bye and I will sit here for a few extra minutes, and we'll recut the beginning. Like, and Scott will yell at me, because I'll probably screw the yeah, middle up 13 yeah. times, even though I say it fine every week live. When you're live, you're good, which is usually the other way around. I know, but whatever. Uh, so we'll recut that, and you know, but it'll actually, at least you'll have a full show, yeah. thank God. Uh, yeah. We lost 20 minutes. A couple weeks ago, so sorry about that. Um, this is Ghostly Talk. I'm Scott L. And I'm Bonnie. Um, and there's a very familiar voice that isn't here, which is it's weird because it's usually, Doug Alicious. Yeah, Doug is not here. Doug's uh, out and about. He's uh, in South Africa right now, saving starving children <laughs> or something like that. He's he's out rocking. He's, he's very gracious with the the starving children. Yes. Yeah, so we had to give him that time. Mm-hmm, we had yes. to give him the time he needed to take care of that. Well, I love children. You. Just trying I to let him absolutely go. absolutely friggin' despise them. And <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. I'm getting maniacal about it, too. I'm like, I'm just like, I just want to see. Just, you know, just, oh, I, I. But, however, speaking of children, I would like to congratulate Shawnee Lee, Mr. Yes. Burris, yes, the ghost man, and Stacy K. Friday, they had a little girl, 6 pounds, 10 ounces, 19 inches long, Addie Lynn Rose Burris. Welcome to the world. Christ, you're like the, are you sure you didn't have the child, Bonnie? Did you deliver the child, Bonnie? (laughs) No, I didn't, but do you know how many people I had? Get a bucket of water and get in the truck. We're going to have this baby right now. Do you know how many people I had to deliver that message to? Because apparently I found out this week that I am the link, apparently, to Sean and his child. Because anyone that wanted to know if Sean, if not, I'm going to say Sean, but if Stacy had had the baby yet, they called or texted me. Okay. So I am the link. So I texted everyone the information once I got it from Mr. Burris. Yeah. So I know it all, and it's just permanently ingrained in my head. And the baby is beautiful. I showed you a picture of yeah, her yeah. earlier tonight. She's absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Congratulations. Just before the show, you showed me the picture. Congratulations, Sean. Sean's a, 
uh, one of the one, a member of the extended Ghostly Talk family. He's been a friend of ours since way, way, way back in the day. So we're super excited uh, to I see. I can't Sean. wait to see yeah, him. Yeah, looking, yeah, looking forward to meeting meeting the baby. Uh, yeah, so congratulations, Sean, and we wish you the best with that. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Sean's a good daddy. He's oh a yeah, he's a big, very good big, daddy. Big, 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 just big. If you've ever met Sean Burris before, the Ghost Man, he's just this big, strong. God, is he strong? Mm-hmm. I mean, Strong, but he's a and big, his, big ass teddy bear. With all his tats, he could be intimidating and kind of frightening to someone that didn't know him. Yeah, he's just a for lovable like guy. Minutes. He's just a lovable guy, and he's you know, like I said, he's been a friend of the show for a number of years. Mm-hmm. So we're super excited for him, and uh, congratulations to to Sean. We're really, really happy for you guys. Yeah. It's awesome. So cool, Hi, you guys. Mwah. Yeah. Uh, a few things to talk about. We got a jam packed show tonight. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I, I want to mention this because um, it's something I mentioned to you before the show here when we were downstairs. Um, we're going to be making – we talked a while back about kind of making some format changes here. Mm-hmm. We're going to try an experiment for July. I thought it meant, like, firing me, but apparently it doesn't. No, you got past corporate on that one. I don't know how. Well, I think it was the free massages. <laughs> that's what, yeah, that's how we get half of our gigs nowadays. <laughs> You're bringing Bonnie, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, just tell her I'll be in room 512. Just tell her to come up there and, you know. Bring the table. Yeah, bring the table. Yeah, exactly. That's the that's the, the, the three words we always hear, bring the table. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to try an experiment for July. Uh, not not too off. We've done it before. We've done it's shows. It's not it's, that crazy. It's not that crazy, uh, but we think it's, you know, I want to kind of see if we can move this in permanently. And what we're going to do is, you know, we used to say the first half hour of the show was ours. Now, yeah. the first hour of the show is ours. For better or for worse, we're going to be taking the first hour of the show, and then the last two hours we'll have for guests. And we're going to see how that's going to work, you know. We were, and what we're going to try to do is, you know, and this may or may not happen some weeks, that, you know, who knows, but... Um, we're going to just pick a topic, maybe, and just jam on it for like a half an hour or something like that. Just mm-hmm. any old topic. You know, we're just going to pick it out throughout oh, the week. Oh, that'll be like old school ghostly talk. Exactly. Well, that's what we talked about a while back and said we're going to try, you know, to go back to the old school, go back to our roots. You going to sneeze? I think I might. <laughs> and we're pulling her out. Come on, hurry up. Okay, I'm okay. All right, all right, okay. So, yeah. We're going to try that. We're going to be starting that with July. We'll be getting the new uh, schedule up uh, in the next few days here also for July so you know what's going on. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to try that and see how it works out. You know, we're just try. You know, I don't want – some people go out there and they do these things and they make these drastic changes. And mm. I, you know, Doug and I have never really been about that. We like to try to move things in, test them out. You know, as we're both IT dorks, and that's what you do. You, right, you, make, you right. make subtle changes. And you see if they work, and if they don't, well, you haven't lost that much ground, you know. So we don't want to totally just change everything at once. We want to try some things here and see how it's going to work out. So, and always, um, and I appreciate it, I've gotten a lot of email on this subject, you know, of making format changes. And I've received a lot of email from people saying, dude, go for it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I said, well, look, people really seem to be into this idea to try to, you know. I don't know why different. anyone would want to hear from us more. Well, but well, that's what we can you, you can't please everybody. Everybody knows that, and I've gotten emails of people saying, "Why don't you just to just shut the f up? I'm tired of it." Right? I've gotten those too. Yeah. Uh, Mine usually say, "Do you add any redeeming value to the show whatsoever?" And I reply with, "No, I don't." <laughs> no, she's just here. For, yeah, whatever. We don't care. Bonnie's here. She's part of the crew, and yeah, she does add a lot of redeeming value to the show. And if you got a problem with that, then deal with it. And again, we can't. Please, everybody, we, we do our best to. We want everybody to enjoy this show. We want to do a show that we like, that we enjoy, but people are also going to enjoy, too. But um, like Doug always says, if it's not for you, there's about a bazillion other shows out there for you Yeah, to man. Try. Yeah, go. go. And we, we encourage that. Oh, absolutely. We encourage that. I'll say it right here again. I know I can speak for Doug on this. Uh, and you know what? Bottom line is here, if you don't like Ghostly Talk, that's fine. Find a show that you enjoy. There's so much variety out there that you don't have to pay for. Mm-hmm. Find what you want. It gives you that luxury to shop around, you know, without without losing any money. It's just a little bit of bandwidth to suck something Absolutely. down and listen to it. So if you don't like what we're doing, hey, that's cool. We can we can deal with that. That's cool. But that's kind of what the... Uh, However, if you do, welcome to the fold. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, if you're new. There's a lot of people. Like, I'm a new listener. Okay, mm-hmm. hey, welcome. We yeah. have one in chat right now. Do we? Well, he's a first-time live show listener, I believe. G- good, because people should listen to the live show. Absolutely. More. You miss a lot of cool mistakes. <laughs> that we can cover up afterwards. Well, generally, we, we, I don't know, we, we, 
We normally keep our mistakes in. Let's be honest. We do. We we keep. Well, we every you know every once in a while I'll miss a break or I'll you know I won't have the you know the audio channel punched in and you'll hear about ten seconds of silence or something on the live show and that's really the extent of what I do to edit the show after the show. I just kind of clean it up so you know it's smooth and, it, and it, but, the way it should be run live. But you know? really, what is? Yeah, Mostly well, yeah. talks tagline. Yeah, exactly. That air never sounded so good. But I that's the stuff that I do fix. I mean, I know cuz you're the man and you make it all smooth and you make it seem like we know what we're doing. We so wrap the lines thank up you. Yeah. For making it seem like we know what we're doing. Well, thank you, buddy. We just show up and Scott makes it work. <laughs> that's all I know. So yeah, uh but that, you know, yeah, but you do miss some of the goofy crap that happens. <laughs> there are a few things like tonight we're going to like I said a few minutes ago, we're going to recut the opening part just for the for the archive yeah. so you know, it's clean and it's 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 consistent. You know, that's what we like to do as a consistent And the archive show. will likely have a screw up from me. Just, yeah. Don't but we'll, be we, I left that in. I, I know. <laughs> I'm leaving it. It's priceless. That's gold right there. We're going to leave it alone. Hey, we make mistakes. So, yeah, okay. Uh, got it. Cannot do a show tonight without mentioning last weekend. Oh, absolutely uh, not. The 13th Annual Heart America Conference. Um, it was. There, there isn't much to say. It was, it was brilliant. It was a Troy Taylor event. That's pretty much all you need to say. What's that? It was a Troy Taylor event. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, there's, there's – when you go to – Decatur for something Troy Taylor is doing, um, there is no doubt that you're going to be witness to a really fantastic panel of speakers, um, a fantastic conference, lots of fantastic people to talk to, and that he just, and you know what, and you guys are going to hear this when we get the, uh, and we're, I will mention very briefly, I'm still working on the Pecan stuff, I'm still working on getting the verifications and all that stuff. Mm. It's going to happen, guys, I'm sorry it hasn't been up any sooner for the downloads to check out the, the discussions, and the same thing's going with, uh, you know, with the, with the the discussions, the speaker discussions mm-hmm. from Decatur last weekend. We're working on that. You're going to hear Troy say this the very first night, though, and I'm going to warn you right now. And I, I'm not it, going to because Doug and I were late. Okay, so. yeah. I was there for this, sitting on this What did he say? Tell me. I'm Troy, to Troy came me. out and said, you know, good evening, you know, the usual thing. Mm-hmm. Glad to have you guys here. He's like, I want to make it very clear. We have a really, really great panel of speakers here. He's mm-hmm. like, basically, you're, none of these people that you're talking to here that are going to be talking to you this weekend have a TV show. Ooh. With the exception of Patrick Burns. And I always, and if you've talked to me personally or whatever, and we've had Patrick on the show here, we, we think Patrick's fantastic. Oh, Patrick's I've awesome. Seen, I've seen Patrick speak several times, and he's one of those few exceptions, I think. He's very down to earth. Well, he, and he knows Hasn't his... Hasn't lost he, his head. He, he knows his stuff. He he is really good at... He, he's a photography expert. He's one of the few people mm-hmm. that I can t- consider an expert in photography itself. Very good at what he does, um, and he just he always gives a good talk. Oh, you absolutely. Know? Uh, and Troy noted that also. He said, you know, Patrick's done a honey evidence, he's a, but he's he still works very hard on this stuff. This is what he does. Um, and he came out and made a very strong point of that. Bottom line, he's like, None, we're here to learn stuff. We're not here to learn about people's TV shows or anything like that. Again, I'm not here to slam on TV shows. Right. But I'm just warning you for that, because that's coming from the man, Troy Taylor, right. who we, you know, is a dear friend of ours and we look up to. Who, by the way, gave a fascinating talk. Mm. We, that auditorium was packed. It was like, you know, Led Zeppelin I, came in there for that I, thing. It absolutely. Was, it, was it was the most packed, I think, I have ever seen that auditorium. But the mere mention of the word sex and everyone's like, oh, I gotta be well, there. It was, it, Troy just released a new book called Sex and the Supernatural and he did his whole discussion on that. And and I, I was one of the lucky people that, you know, we're, you know, when he was getting his stuff ready and everything, you know, he's like, here, check out a couple of these slides, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. I mean, and he, it isn't out there to be like, you know, dirty or anything. Right. Like that. But, I mean, it's a topic that it's it's a fresh new thing to talk mm-hmm. about. And and I think it's obvious by what we talk about here on this show that sex and the supernatural, there are a lot of elements. In oh, absolutely. Show. So Troy came in there and just really gave a great talk. And you're going to be able to hear that here hopefully and in a week or two. he does claim that the paranormal community is the most oversexed community he's ever been. Yeah, in. he did say that. He's, I believe it, though. I believe it. Which is hard, you think. Yeah. I believe it. You know, you you think that unless you're in like a BDSM community, I mean, yeah. Come on. But but that isn't that much sex. You're just getting well, beat up on. Well, all right, fine. 
I mean, a swingers. Frankly, well, swingers. Now, there's where it's uh, If at. you're in a swingers community, then I could see it being more oversexed than paranormal community. That's where it's at, the swingers, man. I, you know, I mean, that's not what I would ever do, but I mean, they they really got a party going on there. And so do the BDSM <laughs> people. I mean, if that's your thing, you like getting the piss beat out of you. Not discriminate against anyone. No, not at all. I think it, I think hey, if that's what your thing is, that's cool. You know, I mean, if you like getting beat with a bull whip, I mean, I don't. You know me. I mean, you, do I have any tattoos, Bonnie? No. no I, do I? I just, you have lots of them. I have six. So you're getting beat every weekend, probably. You're not telling us about I it, are I am. You? I love it. Yeah, you, we've had parties with Beatings, you. Beatings, hair pulling, biting, it's all good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's getting me hot. I'm just thinking about that. <laughs> maybe I do like BDSM, you know I mean? Maybe it's you my thing. You just like doing it. I just... I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm the pitcher. I'll ask Amber later. No. no. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm the pitcher. I don't like catching at all. And that's just for, oh, Christ, forget it. No, just, so anyways, I got a story to tell. Okay, tell it. Um, let me just say, let me just start this off by, I've increased my exercise regimen. Um, and I walked a total of, well, after today, 35 miles this week. Okay. Congratulations to you. Thank the, MP, thank the MP3 player with a lot of Slayer and Venom and Exodus and all that heavy stuff I listen to. That's what keeps my mind occupied. Destroying myself all week long, right? Okay. Uh, just just doing some wicked walks. If you live local here to the winery, you probably see me out on the road. And I got I got to tell two stories, actually. And I'm going to try to crank these out real quick. This was the first one, okay? Okay. Um, uh, I think it was uh, Tuesday. I was out walking, and I was coming up the road by myself. You know, it just... Can you imagine this you know, long-haired dude walking down the road mm -hmm. with nothing but a water bottle and, you know, and an MP3 player in his hand? Wearing all black. Wearing all black for maximum sweat. Mm -hmm. You know, just to really get the sweat going. Um, and I walk along, and I see this lady's car stall about halfway in a driveway off the road. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm like, well, you know, I might as well help her out, you know. So I go there and start trying to push on her truck, and it's, you know, I got it like about 10 foot, and I'm like, I can't get it any further, Right. So some other guy comes running up. He's like, can I help? I'm like, yeah, let's get this thing out of the road, man. These people are freaking out. So he runs up, and then all of a sudden I look over, and I see another guy running down the road, full speed. Mm -hmm. And I look, and it's James Sawyer from MFPS, mm -hmm. my old band. Love him. And I'm like, and he runs up. I'm like, what the hell are you doing here? I'm helping you out. <laughs> Just randomly? Yeah, I'm like. Do you have like a... a Little sensor that goes I, off I don't have to a bat the old bandmate that no. lets him know when you need help. No, so I'm like, so we push it up, and he's like, "What's going on? Is this your, you know, who are you with?" I'm like, "This isn't my truck." He's like, "Well, whose truck is it?" I'm like, "I don't know." <laughs> he's like, "Well, why don't you know?" I'm like, "I don't know." The lady's on the side of the road. Well, what are you doing out here? I'm walking. Why are you walking? Because I feel like walking. I can see this conversation happening. Is your car broke? Exactly like that. Is your car broke? No, my car's not broke. I'm just walking. Oh. Let me explain everything to you, James. Let's go walk. So we went and we chatted. It was really funny, you know. But it was just one of those weird things. I'm like, where did I? He's like, I was driving down the road and I saw you and I honked, but you didn't hear me. I'm like, well, yeah, I got, I got, I got Exodus on 11 here on my MP3 player. I can't hear anything right now, you know. He's like, oh, okay. So you know, whatever. So that was cool. Anyways, um, Wednesday, I woke up super early because after the party weekend we had. Mm -hmm. I gained a pound this week. Some of us partied a little more than others. That's all. Uh, yeah. We say. Yeah. Wow. 1 a.m., where's Bonnie at? She's going to get more beer. I'm like, oh, great. I was going to bed. Okay. I went to bed at 6 a.m., but anyways. 6 a.m. Actually, 7, because I talked to Doug for an hour. That's, I couldn't even fathom that. Nah, yeah, whatever. Well, regardless of my lameness, I still put on a pound last week. Mm -hmm. And I weighed in, and I was like, oh, my God, I gained weight. I'm such a terrible fat piece of crap. Oh, God, so that's part of the reason I'm like, okay, I'm going to start really rocking out the exercise, right? And um, so Wednesday morning, I woke up at 6 a.m., mm -hmm. ate my breakfast, and got on the road about 7.30. I'm walking <clears> by <throat> myself at 7.30, trotting along. And I'm I, on my way back, I mean, I'm covered in sweat now. I mean, when you get out there, the sun here, it's been hot. Oh, yeah. Like, it's been real hot. Um, uh, thankfully, I bring a lot of water. It takes care of me. But I'm coming back uh, up, a, up one of the roads here towards my towards the winery, and I, I walk by a house, and I see a pit bull come walking down the driveway. Mm -hmm. So I look over, and I'm like, Oh boy. Okay. And I'm like, you know, he and he he wasn't running, he wasn't growling, he wasn't barking, but I'm like, that don't look like a friendly dog. So I just keep walking, and he starts to follow me. I'm mm -hmm. like, great. I'm in nothing but a pair of workout shorts, a t-shirt, and a pair of sneakers here, 
if this thing takes a chomp into me anywhere, it's gonna just it's gonna just bite right through <laughs> me like a shark. I'm like, this is just I'm in a bad spot here. So um, so I just keep walking, and you know, he I think he came to the, his property line or whatever, and he stopped and he was staring at me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well. Okay, all right. So I get so pissed about it, though. I go across the street and come come back and get, you know, look at the house, the address. And it's right. one of the few times I've ever done anything. This. I actually called animal control. Okay. I said, hey, man, you know, I don't mean to be be uh, be mean here or anything like that, but this guy's, you know, whoever owns the dog, there's no rope on this thing. There's no chain on this dog. It's a pit bull. You know, God knows what. And the, the gate's wide open at the house. You know, luckily, you know, not like I'm Mr. Like, you know, speaker to animals, but I know how to handle that. You don't run from a pit bull. Right. You just keep walking. You don't act You don't act anything weird. You just keep walking. And even then, don't guarantee you, you know, any type of, you know, getting getting out of the situation. Right. I was lucky. So that's what I told the, the animal control people. I'm like, look, you know, um, God knows if some kid come by here and that thing come out, he would just freak out and run. That thing would have come after him. He's like, you're absolutely right. We're on our way over right now to handle this. And that was the last I heard about it. But my message to you people out there who have dogs, and, you know, I have my opinions on dog owners. I mean, I know a lot of people that own dogs, and they're really cool. But when, especially when I'm out on Amber's side of town, and we're on the boardwalk, and we see 4,000 dogs out there oh, crawling yeah. at you as you walk by. Even the mayor of Grand Haven, made a, Amber mentioned this to me, even the mayor of Grand Haven mentioned that, he went to a festival recently there himself and said, you know, people, you need, you need to leave your dogs at home, okay? Um, they're, they, first of all, they make a lot of messes. I mean, dogs are cool. I'm not knocking dogs, okay? They're cool. They're fun. They can be hilarious, but they make a mess. If, if, well, a responsible dog owner would clean the mess. So, oh, absolutely. But obviously, well, I'm too, you know, whatever, you know. Um, but they just generally scare people sometimes. I don't mm-hmm. care what kind of dog it is. Um, put a chain on your goddamn dog, though. When, mm-hmm. when, you know, when friendly people like me are walking by that just trying to get some exercise in the morning, we're not bothering anybody. I understand that a lot of people own dogs, especially, you know, strong dogs, because they want to protect their homes. And I admire that. Absolutely. I'm the same way. I do whatever I can to protect my home also. But put a chain on it. If I'm that close and the chain, if I'm that close and the chain doesn't snap, you know, mm-hmm. then I'm too close to your house. That's obvious. You're right. Uh, but I'm, when I'm walking by. And here comes a dog just walking out of a backyard. It's not, you know, a, a little chihuahua or a little hot dog dog or whatever the heck it is, a Datsun or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, even then, you know, I've been bit by I've been I've been yeah. bit by a chihuahua before, so I know that you can't even trust, trust those dogs. Um, put a chain on your dog, man. That's just unbelievable, dude. It's just you know, and this is new for me because I usually just walk, you know, within the confines of the winery. Here, you know, and, I, I, and I've been kind of going out, walking long distances and stuff like that, and using mm. Google Maps and figuring out my length and whatnot. Um, and it's just something I noticed now. So all you people out there, please chain up your dogs so nobody gets killed, especially if you have some insane pit bull, which I don't know why you'd own a dog like that in the first place. I mean, right. That's just some machismo BS right there, in my opinion. And you know what? If you own a pit bull and you're mad, deal with it. I don't really care. That's my opinion. I, I don't understand any other reason for owning a pit bull besides being a macho machismo, you know, look at me, I have a big, strong, crazy dog, and it's my, I'm its master! Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm the master of this beast that I, you know, look. Until it eats their kid's face off. Yeah. You know, even, we were talking about the monkey a couple, you know, months ago that mm-hmm. did that, ate the lady's face off. It's like, you know, a lot, of, some of these animals just, you know, they belong somewhere else. They don't belong in the home, unfortunately. You know, and that's coming from somebody who, you know, I never grew up in a house with a dog. You know what I mean? Right. I have had pets, and I've been emotionally attached to them, so I understand the sentimental value of having a pet. That's fine. But, okay, look, there's other people that you have to deal with. If you want to have pets like that, you know, move to a compound or something. Right. And they can guard your compound, and nobody will come near you. So, yeah, that was kind of scary, man. That really <laughs> Kind of freaked I, me I out. I can imagine. Yeah, it kind of freaked me out, you know. And I, thankfully, I just kind of kept my cool and just kept walking. And um, yeah, <laughs> so chain your dogs up. Just, uh, just no, no more. I don't, I don't want to see it anymore. Uh, another thing I want to mention again too, uh, before we go to break here, uh, submit your commercials. This is one thing I've been talking about a lot lately here. If you have a podcast, you listen to our show. You have your own podcast or mm. your own radio show. We love playing other people's commercials here. There's no money involved. Okay. I've had emails like that from people going, well, how much does it cost? I'm like, it doesn't cost anything. We never mentioned any money here. We don't want to deal with money. We don't deal with money with Ghostly Talk. This isn't a money operation. Send us your commercials. Uh, send me an MP3. Just send one over. It's, it's perfectly cool, and we'll put it up there for you. You know, as, you know, as long as it isn't, 
me. I guess there have to be certain lines, and you people should know those lines. Yeah, we shouldn't have to spell them out. We're not going to be, like, advertising for the National Socialist Party or anything like that. I'm not into that crap, and a lot of people aren't. So, But, you know, if, if you have a paranormal podcast, something along those lines, send the commercial over. If you have a little liner for it or whatever, feel free. Drop us a line, send it over, and we will put it up for you, put it in our commercial sequences. So, yeah, uh, that's something I wanted to get out there, too. Uh, Bonnie, I need help. Anything else going on here? Um. I don't know. I'm in my voice is already fried. I'm in, a, in the in the middle of a riveting conversation in chat, but um, <clears throat> it's with Tanya K. You know how she is. Tanya, hello, Tanya. We love. There's her. There's something we should talk about. There's a wild. Actually, we should talk about the uh, release of the limited edition Doctor oh. Bond's American Spirit Summit. God, and I got to watch that thing when we came back from Decatur, and is it it is it brilliance to the eyes? Oh my God, it's. My my niece, because like, and I am biased because I'm in the damn. Field, I've so I've yeah. watched it. I couldn't tell you how many times. Your mom's in chat, by the way. Tell her hi. Hello, mom. And um, I I couldn't tell you how many times I watched it. But the the one we got before was just the DVD. Well, this one I brought home, and it's I've, it's still in my purse right now. I've been carrying it with me everywhere in case anyone wants to watch it. Yeah. Because that's how I roll. And uh, my niece went in my purse for something the other day, and she pulls it out, and she goes, "What in the hell?" Why are you on the cover of this DVD? Uh, what What is this? And I'm like, oh, it's a movie we did. Blah, it's a porno blah. we just made. <laughs> yeah, it's a porno about shiny, Dr. John happy takes people. It in the pool. Oh, watch it. Um, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. from what I hear about her, it wouldn't really It wouldn't be too me. far removed, you but see. Anyway. There's part two time. <laughs> We got yeah, it. Let's put it in the can. It. Let's do this thing. Let's start filming immediately. However, Scott will now play the part of Dr. Dawn. Oh, yeah. I'll try anything once. Not going to be me. Uh, That's all I'm saying. (laughs) uh, (laughs) Anyway. Keep going. All right. My niece was like, oh, my God, what is this? And she was like, why are you holding a smiley face? And why is that girl grabbing your boob? And I said, she's not really. It just kind of looks that way, and that's just how it works. And she's like, okay, I have to watch this. So we sat down and watched it. And, Tanya, you'll be happy to know my niece was cracking up. The entire time we were watching the movie, she's like, oh, my God, I want to show this to my friends. And I'm like, okay, I don't know how yeah. your friends are going to react to it, but go for it. So, for those of you that don't know, the limited edition of Dr. Dawn's American Spirit Summit is out. Tanya, where can they get it? Oh, Put yeah. it in the chat room and let us know so we can let everyone know. Yeah, yeah definitely do that before we go to break. We'll mention that. Um Got to say hello to a few other people here. Becky Ray from last week. Oh, absolutely. Love um, her. The first chance I had to really sit down, we we sat and talked all night Saturday night, and it was just an absolute pleasure to hang out with Becky Ray. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, wish, we wish she could have had Laura Moon there, too, her Oh, her, yes, her I love them both. We miss Laura. Laura's awesome. Um, go Steve at Tammy. Go Steve at Sonia, where we just mentioned was there. Uh, got to hang out with Tammy for a while. It was really great to hang mm-hmm. out with Tammy again. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andy Kaiser, Tanya's husband. I mean, Andy my, my, is my, just smoking hot. My man, okay. my, my man crush, you know. And if anyone wants to know, Scott, in my opinion, is winning in the gay off. But <laughs> you, you, you can get the film at expirofilms.com. It's E-X-S-P-I-R-O films.com. Get it. You'll love it. We have to go to break here in a second. But, uh, yeah, speaking of the gay off, we have to mention this. I took a major hit, and I did this completely conscious. Uh, but you, you were guys, drunk. No, 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 no. This was when I, this was before the wine really got the flow on Saturday night. And, like, I ordered a glass of Riesling. Okay. That, mm-hmm. Everybody's like, you know, I'm like, yeah. Okay, just take it easy on that. And, they're, and we're ordering food, and I'm like, well, can I please get the London broil crisp salad? And do you have a balsamic vinegar that I can put on? Oh I don't even my. think anything about this, right? And Andy's just like, oh, there's 10 points for Scott right there. He's in the lead, absolutely. So, yeah, uh, we're going to keep with this game going. Uh, I don't even know if we've explained the gay off. but it's, You did. Did we before? Yeah. When you got all the – when you got your care package, you explained it on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, well uh, – the game is still on, uh, and we're still battling to see who is going to reign supreme in the gay off. Uh, so we'll keep you guys posted on that. I, I, I don't know why that would be any credible credible news on this show. But, you, know, but cool. you know, in case people want to know, it's like you use losing weight. People want to know who's winning the game. Yeah, 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 totally cool. But we got to go to break. We're going to bring on Dwayne Claude. We're going to talk about some demonology, some cases he's been working on. Uh, hot topic, obviously. It's come up here several times in the show, so we're looking to- forward to talking to Dwayne. Uh, this is Ghost of Talk. Oh, sorry. I totally forgot the other You're part. You're supposed to say your name. I- I've had a rough day. 
This is Ghostly Talk. I'm Scott L. And I'm Bonnie. We'll be right back after this. Ghostly Talk! Do you feel like there's something happening in your home or business? Something you can't explain? Do you think that whatever is happening seems to be paranormal? Do they exist? Florida Ghost Hunters at FloridaGhostHunters.com are looking for haunted locations throughout Central Florida. Let the team at Florida Ghost Hunters investigate your paranormal experience. Their mission is to disprove a haunting with science, to find a reasonable explanation to a problem, and whatever is left becomes evidence. FloridaGhostHunters.com If you've experienced paranormal activity in your home or business, you are urged to visit FloridaGhostHunters.com and click Need Help. <gasps> FloridaGhostHunters.com Hi, this is Luke. And this is Tobin from Quest Research. Hey, Tobin, what do you get when four guys with absolutely no video experience whatsoever decide to produce their own online paranormal TV show? I don't know. What? Oh, wait. I do know. Ghost Diaries, right? That's right. You can check us out and get involved at www.questresearch.net and good thing about being new is that you will only get better.
The Darker Side of the Moon is an alternative talk variety show. DarkerSideRadio.com Since 2006, host Becky Ray and Laura Moon speak with independent filmmakers, authors, musicians, artists, and many, many more. DarkerSideRadio.com Sometimes serious, mostly fun, the show has a little for everyone. Was it odd, freaky, and you didn't hear it on the 5 o'clock news? Then we'll probably cover it here. DarkerSideRadio.com DarkerSide currently airs live Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 7 p.m. Central and 5 p.m. Pacific. DarkerSideRadio.com If you happen to miss it, you can listen to show archives at any time online at DarkerSideRadio.com or you may subscribe to the show on iTunes. DarkerSideRadio.com Dwayne has had an interest in the paranormal since a very young age. Although he never truly experienced anything, he knew there must be something more out there. It was in his early 20s that he discovered that what lurked in the darkness and that not all that, that was there was friendly. He, he and a group of friends accidentally invited a malevolent entity into their lives that turned into their reality inside out which uh, I really need to ask you about this, Dwayne. Uh, it took nearly a year to vanquish the entity, but along that journey he discovered just how important faith is for a paranormal investigator. Thanks to that faith, he is now a survivor. It, it has been since that journey, others seek him looking for help with the same diabolic darkness that influences their lives. Uh, his website is, uh, well, there's a couple of websites, uh, wnyparanormal.org or also uh, dwayneclaude.wnyparanormal.org. Dwayne, how you doing? Welcome to the show. I'm doing great, Scott. It's good to have you back on. It's been a while since we talked to you. Yeah, it's been a couple of years at least. Last time I talked to you, uh, Doug just got back from uh, Bigfoot hunts. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, that was a while ago. It was a while ago. But, yeah, obviously you've been doing uh, over the last couple of years. I know you've really started. I mean, there's, uh, it sounds like you've been working on this for a very long time. But uh, you've been working a lot on the, a lot of these, a lot of these demon, well, how would you even say it? I mean, cases of demonology. And we've been hearing a lot about this stuff oh, yeah. as far as demonology is concerned. Um, and I know you wanted to maybe elaborate on a couple of cases, you know, with limited information on the personal aspects. But uh, maybe talk about a couple of cases tonight. Am I correct? Yeah, I would love to. Love to. It just you know, it seems like since more interest and and focus has been brought out to the paranormal, there's been a lot of darker things that have also kind of come out of this too. Um, it's more than just uh, you know ghostly knockings and people seeing apparitions in houses. Now it just seems like I'm getting more and more phone calls anymore from people that have these really nasty things happening. Well, why do you think that is, Dwayne, as far as, you know, with all the things that are going on nowadays? I mean, there's, you know, the economy sucks. Uh, and when something like that happens, we've mentioned it here several times, uh, you, know, you know, people tend to turn to other things. When, it, when, when all else is failing around there, they, they may become more spiritual and look for answers in that thing. Why do you think that there is this increase in maybe calls that are coming your way on cases of this sort? Well, I think there's a couple different reasons with it. Like you say, anytime you have a depression or, or recession, anything like that, there's an increased interest in the paranormal. There's been lots of research that goes out and shows that. But what also tends to happen is you also have all this negativity that, that's out there. Oh. Um, you know, it's, it, it's <laughs> I hate to make the, the analogy, but I mean, if you think about the Ghostbusters movie, uh, the second one, which wasn't that great, but it talks about all the negativity New York City had and all the movies oh, yeah. that came out. Well... Same concept. I mean, you have all this negativity with people. The economy's bad. People are losing jobs. This negative energy just feeds it. And that's one of the reasons I think that people who are more susceptible to influence, that are more susceptible to these negative energies, are drawing them in. But you've also got, you know, it seems like every cable station now has a paranormal TV show. And, you know, 
most of them, you know, are out there. They're aggravating spirits, things like that on TV. Because you know what? That's what you do on TV to yeah. make things more exciting. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, you've got you know these people out here that have never ghost hunted. They've never done a paranormal investigation, and they're out there yelling at things and they're provoking things. And you know what? You never know what you're provoking. And a lot of times, or sometimes anyways, you invite spirits in. Plus, I think with all this increased interest in ghosts, you have people dabbling more with Ouija boards and magic and things like that. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you know, and I, that, that is a great analogy. i got to go back and, and about the Ghostbusters film, uh, Ghostbusters 2. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, that film, yeah, it may, it may not have been as good as the original. But no, it, it wasn't. But it really had a message, though, right? And that's what you, you illustrated there, Dwayne, is that, you know, especially in these times where things are so rough with people, losing jobs left and right, losing houses left and right, you know, there is going to be a lot of negative energy out there. And, and on the spiritual side, on the etheric side of this thing, that's a very plausible cause, I think. I mean, that, could, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, but then on the other side, you did mention, too, and I, to flesh that out even more, yeah, I think a lot of people, again, we, I think it's great that people are, are inspired to go out there and do this kind of work. It's great. Uh, but at the same time, if they don't know what they're doing, they don't know what they're getting themselves into sometimes, I think. Uh, and that's why, you know, television shows aren't always the greatest education. There's a lot of other sources where you can get a real education in this stuff so you don't get yourself in trouble. Oh, absolutely. I mean, what, what people don't seem to realize is when they see these TV shows, you know, people like Paranormal States you know, do a great job as investigators, but, you know, they're taking three days' worth of investigations and boiling that down to, what, 22 minutes? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things that people don't see that go on. You know, they don't see how the team is going in and spiritually protecting themselves before going in and doing these things. Mm-hmm. They're, not, they're not seeing how they cleanse themselves when they leave. They're, they're really seeing a very small portion of what goes on there. And I, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a real vital aspect that, that people are missing out on, just because it's not the TV. Well, no, yeah, and I mean, we've been saying it for years here, Dwayne, you know, when it just comes to ghost hunting, not even getting to the demonology side of the thing, um, we've been saying it for years that, look, you know, back in the day it used to be like, look, what Hollywood's telling you is different from what right. it's really like out there. Um, you know, a lot of times you go into these places, and a lot of times nothing really ever happens. You know, you end up spending, you know, maybe eight, ten hours sitting somewhere, and you're recording and doing your thing, but you might not yield any type of evidence or what we could, what we, what we, yeah, what would be considered evidence out of uh, that investigation, right? Uh, so, you know, again, it just comes down to. Again, just being educated, I think, in this stuff and, and knowing what to look for and what to avoid, I think, and the pitfalls, I guess you could call them, to avoid. Oh, exactly. I mean, what, I, what I've grown up to, to believe and what, what I tend to, to tell people is, you know what, going into these places is, is great, but when you learn experience because you never know who the person is going to be that's actually going to be able to prove the existence or non-existence of a ghost. But yeah. Don't just go in with pure science because there's things out there that you don't know that you don't understand. I always tell people to carry your faith in your back pocket, you know, because there has to be a higher power out there. At least that's my belief. And if there is a higher power out there, they're going to protect you, or he's going to protect you if you need that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you need to go in and thump a Bible when you go in and do an investigation, but at least keep that thought in your mind that there may be something else that's there besides just a human spirit, if there is anything there. Yeah, well, people, and we said this, I think, a couple of weeks ago, that the word scientific is being tossed around a lot nowadays, you know, and I, people like to you, well, we're a scientific-based ghost hunting team, we're science-based, and I'm like, well... That's great, and I, you know, that's really cool. I don't, I, I'm, I'm convinced that a lot of people don't really know what the term science really means all the time. But oh, yeah. be that as it may, um, I, I mean, after all the years, all the people we've talked to on this show and the work we've done in the field, I've always said, like, you know, let's let's mix both these things. I mean, yeah, there's some things we're not going to be able to explain with a, with a digital recorder or or whatever tool it is out there that we have in our hands. There may be something we might need to bring somebody in here that may have powers or psychic sensitivity or whatever it may be uh, or you might go to spirituality right. you know, look inside yourself uh, it may help you out I think both of these things are good tools in general oh, exactly I mean, there's, there's such a large part of the human brain that's not being utilized and you know there, there are people out there that you know, we, we utilize psychics and in investigations that we do 
and we send them in blind. You know, we have we use them as a source to pick up data, pick up information to help us gather other unexplained evidence, mm-hmm. and then we go back and do the historical research. And you know, you get some really good ones to get some right on information of, of things that they should not know. Yes, it's definitely a, a really great thing to, to meld the two worlds together and and bring them. I mean, one really interesting fact that that was brought to my attention a few years ago. Um, I don't know if you ever had Vince Wilson on the air. Yeah. Vince told me one time, it's it's really interesting with ghost hunting and paranormal investigation. They never started using um, meteorological equipment until Ghostbusters came out. They mm-hmm. never they never used EMF meters. They never looked for temperature changes. They never did any of that stuff until Hollywood made the movie. Mm. Well, which, yeah. Well, go ahead. I'm sorry. Which I just I, I really kind of find it humorous in a way. Well, yeah, I mean, well, and again, it's just the influence. I mean, there's nothing wrong with inspiration. I mean, I think a lot of really interesting ideas uh, and, and maybe even possible advancements in technology and science may have been as a result of sci-fi fiction. I mean, we've, I, there's, I've, there's been plenty of books out there that have talked about, you know, all these wild things that can ha- be in the future, and the next thing we know, there it is right there. So I think, you know, even Hollywood sometimes, they can be visionaries and make someone think about something in a different way. And that's great, as long as you know how to use it. <laughs> you know, that, that's <laughs> well, right. I mean, it's like Star Trek. I mean, the Star Trek of the 70s, is, there's a lot of things there that are used today. Exactly, you know, and there's a lot of visionaries out there that write that stuff, and I think that's a, that's a healthy thing, um, and I think it does help, you know, advance things. But let's talk about some of the, a couple of these cases because I know we could, I know we could just jam on the incidentals of this thing forever. Dwayne. I know we could talk forever on this, but I really want to hear about maybe a couple of cases that you've worked on about this, if you don't mind. No, not not at all. Um, I, I have a case right now that um, we we just finished up um, through last last night actually. It's a case that actually has been going on for the last two years um, involved a uh, 13 year old boy and it, it, it's, it's been a very long and arduous case in the fact that we were initially called in just to do a regular paranormal investigation probably about five years ago mm-hmm. um, it, the family was experiencing all sorts of strange things they would see shadow people walking around the, the front yard um, they were getting EVPs and they were doing all this stuff before the, the TV show started to come out. Yeah. And w- one of the things that they found was that they were actually able to communicate with the entities that were outside. They were setting up an instance where they could have the entity knock on the outside of the house once for yes, twice for no, just like the really? relaxers used to do. Um, and one night we were there and they demonstrated it. I sent an investigator outside, happened again, and there was nobody outside that was actually rapping. So it got to be a very interesting place, and come to find out that the house itself was actually located on an old battlefield just outside of Buffalo, New York, okay. and um, doing a little more historical research, we, we found that the land itself where it was located used to be a internment camp for Native Americans during the Revolutionary War. And there was a lot of hangings that had gone on there. Okay. As, as we continued to uncover stuff, we found that there was actually quite a long history of things going on there, where back in 1940, there was actually a, a 10-year-old boy who hung himself from a belt. Oh, um, oh God. Off a bunk bed. Um, as the, the homeowners purchased the land, they knocked down the old house where the, the child was, and they began to build their house. They actually had a couple pull in their driveway, um, died of carbon monoxide poisoning. Mm-hmm. Um, as they're building the house, the, the gentleman who was roofing the house went home one day and hung himself. Oh, God. And all this stuff begins to happen. Well, as, as time progressed, the, the boy began to hear voices in the house, and their voices were calling his name. And the grandma. He actually lived with his grandparents, and Grandma began to get a little worried, so she had us come back out. We did a cleansing of the house, and things seemed to settle down for a while. And it was a little bit later, probably about six months later, she gives me a call frantically saying, we've just had to admit my grandson to the hospital. Oh, my God. What happened? 
she goes, I, I can't explain it. What, what happened to him is something just snapped in him. He came out one day. His, his face had changed. Um, his voice had changed. Uh, he lifted up a 200-pound recliner over top of his head. Wow! Um, grandfather managed to get it back down. Kid picked up a, a stereo, hit the grandfather. They ended up having to call the police department oh out God. To, to get him down. Well, they sent him to uh, psychiatric work for children. Uh-huh. And while, while he was there, they were doing all sorts of evaluations and couldn't find anything wrong with him. They actually had him on massive doses of, of anxiety medications, um, 800 milligrams of, of Seroquel and Thorazine and Ativan, and enough that should have put guys you know, three times his size down. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't affect him at all. And uh, in fact, at, at one point, he actually lifted a nurse up, threw her down the hallway. Oh my God! Uh, and during his his, I don't blame him for doing that. <laughs> those nurses just piss me off. So yeah. But, but but during his his stay there, he actually injured twelve different people. Wow. Uh, my God. Yeah. It, it, this is at the time was a twelve year old boy. No. It's fun. Well, I've had some temper tantrums before. But, yeah, really. But, but I mean. If you, I don't know if you can explain this or not, Dwayne, but we've heard this. I've heard this in, in several cases when it involves a demonic possession of this sort. Uh, where does the superhuman strength type thing come from? Have you ever, you guys ever dip, like dove into that and try to find out what what the deal is with that? You know, I I don't really know. No, um, that's fine. I understand. <laughs> yeah. I, all, all I can say is I, I, you know, maybe from a physiological standpoint, there's a huge adren- adrenaline rush. You know, because you know, we've heard of people lifting cars off. off yeah, people, yeah. But I, I don't really know where it comes from. Um, but, but this child began to do more than just have superhuman strength. He actually began to prophesize things. Mm-hmm. Uh, events that would happen uh, that were bad events would happen days later. Mm-hmm. Uh, all sorts of bad things began to happen. Um, wow. And he, he eventually got sent home. And while he was home, his uh, uncle had come over to try and cleanse the property himself. And mm-hmm. immediately after doing so, he, he actually began to change his personality as well. And it was probably about, about two months ago, I get a phone call from the grandmother. And the cousin of this boy, who was 14 years old, and a girl had hung herself. Oh. Exactly six weeks later, the uncle that tried to cleanse the property hung himself. Oh, my. So now you've got four or five hangings directly related to this property. This child is is now nightly going into these possessions where his face changes. He actually gets marks of possession that go from the the tops of his fingers Uh up to his elbow. They begin to ooze this very clear liquid. Um... He begins to babble incoherently uh, in a different language. He, his, his eyes go completely black. Um, all this stuff begins to happen. The, the grandparents are scared to death. One of the most frustrating things that I, I've had happen is been trying, had been trying to get the family help. Because, you know, you, you have all these people out there right now that, you know, hanging their shingles as demonologists or exorcists yep. and, and things like that, when it comes down to brass tacks and you need to find help, they don't come to the plate. And, well, yeah. And it's so frustrating. I mean, we, I actually had got the Catholic, Catholic Church involved. Um, the diocese that I worked with, the exorcist had passed away a number of years ago. They had a, a gentleman who had no clue what he was doing. Um came out and felt that because he believed in God that the child would not hurt him. And that is such a fallacy. But what eventually ended up happening was that we, because the the land it was located on was actually Native American ground, we were actually able to get some of the local tribe to help us to calm the land. And by calming the land, it actually helped to calm the child. Oh, it was kind of like going around through the back door. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the in in the process, I was actually able to find a deliverance minister to come out and assist as well. 
And last night, we, we attempted to do a deliverance with a child. Mm -hmm. And as we're doing it, one of the more most important things that people don't realize with, with demonology and possession and, and things like that is that it doesn't matter if it's a priest or a bishop or a rabbi or or just somebody with a great amount of faith, if they go out and begin to work with a person under the influence, they aren't really the ones that carry the power. I mean, the, the, the best quote that I ever read was in a book uh, called Glimpse of the Devil by Scott Peck, and he said it the best way, that the patient themselves are the exorcist, unless the individual wants to let go of mm -hmm. that power. It's not going to happen. But they want to help themselves. I mean, it, ultimately, yeah. Exactly. And as we're going through the process last night, a, a very sad thing happened. I mean, we, we began working with the child, and the entities were coming up, and you could, you could feel the, the heaviness in the room, and the voice was changing. And you know, we, we basically came out and said, the child's name was Michael. We said, Michael, do you want our help? Mm -hmm. And he said, no, I don't. Oh, my. He said, well, Why? Because, you know, all, all my life I've gone through and had everything taken away from me. I, I've, I've been weak. I've been scared. I'm not weak anymore. I'm not scared. I have the power. And wow. that was probably one of the things that, that, that that's probably shaken me more than anything else I've ever heard or experienced so far is some is. A statement like that, yeah, because that does come at a price, and you know the, the child himself has, has basically isolated himself from from everybody else. Um, he's been kicked out of school now. His his grandparents are terrified. The family won't go near him anymore. Um, he's, he's physically ill, and he doesn't want the help. So, I mean, you're literally going to, I mean, this case is closed as far as you're concerned then? Until the child decides that he's ready for the help and wants the help, he really can't do anything. And that's so sad. I mean, I can imagine the, the toll it would take on you just yourself having to hear something like that. You know, it, it, it is sad because this case has influenced so many people. Um, the, the people who have been involved with it has have, have had visitations at their house by these entities. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we were out there a couple of weeks ago trying to work with the family and work with the house, and, you know, the next day we come home, and one of my team members ends up in the hospital because she can't breathe anymore. And this has this happens to a couple different people. You know, mm -hmm. when, when I was out there um, that, that same night that um, a couple of weeks ago, you know, I was attacked. I mean, I felt something come up behind me, and the breath was taken away. And, oh, my God. You know, it's it, it's so difficult to try and explain to people that things that you can't see have that kind of power. Yep. And it's, it's just amazing. There, there's another woman that I've been working with. She's in her early 30s. Mm -hmm. um, has had bad problems all of her life and never really equated to what was going on with her until one day she started going to church and started to pray and she came home one day and started to pray and, and she found that she was beginning to hear voices in the house and that it, it increasingly became more difficult for her to pray and yeah. as it became more difficult for her to pray she actually ended up the best way to, to say it was the entity was actually beginning to physically contort her body. I mean, I was there one night, and I said, okay, well, let's pray and see what happens. And as we're doing this, she ends up on the floor, and the best way to describe it is she was in a hog-tied position, like something was was holding her down, hands tied behind her, her back. Mm -hmm. um, and there were three voices coming out of her at the same time. Dwayne, I hate that I am really, really sorry about this, but we're, like, totally out of time. <laughs> I we'll so, save this for another time. You know, and this, I, do, I, I blame myself. It happens every time. I blame myself. It's my fault. I'm taking the brunt for this one because, I mean, I want to talk more about these cases, too, and, and get into this stuff. We're going to have to bring it back on, like, really, really fast, I think, and do this thing because, yeah, we totally hammered through this thing, and I, I, I had a feeling we were, we were going we were gonna to run over. I'm so sorry, Dwayne. That's all right. But no, I mean, really. We'll read the cliffhanger. Yeah, well, you have a book out, too. What's the name of the book? Yeah, uh, actually, Baptism by Fire. Yes, yes. 
Book on Demonology, uh, easiest way to find it is on Amazon. Uh, just look under Dwayne Claude, and that pops up uh, that book along with a few others that I've, I've written as well. Fantastic. And, Dwayne, I can't thank you enough for joining us, too. We're going to definitely get you back on quick and talk more about this stuff because it's a hot topic. I want to talk more about demonology on here if we can and kind of get the message out, you know, that it isn't as easy as it sounds. Uh, (laughs) Not by any means. Hang tight for one second, Dwayne. Uh, Just don't leave the line just yet, okay? All right. All right, guys, we're going to go to break here real quick. Coming back, when we come back, we're going to be talking to Jerry Smith about weather warfare. This is going to be a really wild topic. We've talked about it before, but there's new developments and things to talk about, too. So we'll be right back after this. This is Ghostly Talk. I'm Scott L. And I'm Bonnie. We'll be right back after this. Miss a live broadcast? Feel free to download it direct from the on-demand archives at ghostlytalk.com. 